Welcome to the Sunday Collective, Ma. Good morning, everyone. Or good evening. Depends on where you are. Or good day. Season. Oh, yeah. Of course. For those who are re-watching our live. So yeah. it's always so exciting and meditative whenever I'm joining in on these Sunday Collectives with you, Ma, and uh, the entire collective live or when they are re-watching it. That uh, before we delve into today's really very intriguing topic of this uh, oscillation in our minds hmm. of this statement that this life is all that there is. So it can be said in a, in a moment of exuberation and it can be said in a moment of great doubt, frustration and helplessness. So before we get to that, my question to you is that why are these Sunday collectives um, so very energetically powerful? Because every time I join in and I'm participating here live or even when I'm re-watching them on YouTube, I am feeling a great uh, deep silence, like a meditative silence. So what is that about? That is because, you know, the energies of Sunday are very, very powerful. All of divinity is collaborating and it's the sun's day and the shining light that's coming into our universe and uh, maintaining all of life, giving us the impetus to grow, to be, to nurture, to see, to uh, uh, collaborate with whatever is available to us. And uh, so Sundays is a magnificent day. And when you wake up in the morning and, you know, we've chosen this magical time of 8.30. So the light of the sun is permeating into the atmosphere wherever you are in the world. And that light is charging up uh, every molecule of the planet. So when we breathe, when other people breathe, when we, uh, the resonance of, you know, the sound of the sun is Om. And uh, so when the rays touch our body, it's like an embrace of that, uh, that sound of wellness. I am that I am kind of a consciousness. And uh, we become part of that uh, sun's exuberant light and we start also channeling that. And when we open up, you know, mm -hmm. then uh, other energies also flow in to deeply touch us at the innermost uh, uh, centers of our consciousness and our subconscious mind and our unconscious mind and our conscious mind and, and deep into the spiritual consciousness. We are able to take that, uh, you know, nectarian energy and flow with it. And when you come back to listening, that energy is going out of that uh, voice, that uh, conversation. And so whenever you're listening to it, you're re-inviting those energies into yourself. And the knowledge, of course, is uh, very illuminating and uh, awakens our uh, five senses, awakens our heart our throat and third eye and we are you know able to reinvent ourselves we can be grateful we can be happy we can be also sometimes sad but you know having the ability to to heal that part of ourselves to forgive and to move on so that is what the sunday collectives are all about to recharge yourself and uh, walk ahead Beautiful, Ma. So very grateful. So even hmm. when the, when the moment is recorded and you are downloading and uh, sending providing out sending healing. out this healing light and allowing us this access, even if we are rewatching it, we are actually connecting to connecting this, this moment. This moment, yeah. Wow. And gathering that energy and uh, filling our karmic uh, vessel or the chakras or even the body. You know, like we are bathing it. And so the light is bathing you inside and outside and you are recharged. Absolutely. So as we are heading into this recharge for today with this yeah. wonderful topic of this life is all that there is. Um, Ma, requesting you to share the, the stories of associations where there has been a surprise for you when people have wanted to live many lives, to experience life again and again, and when people have wanted it to be just this one life to experience in all its glory. Yeah, the, the, I remember that uh, I was teaching a seminar in Jerusalem, and, um, you know, I was teaching a healing seminar, and I was initiating the people, and then after the initiations were complete, everyone was sharing their own conscious, you know, awareness of what happened in the attunement, what happened in the meditation that followed. 
and what were they feeling in their hands as the energy was being channeled. And everybody was very excited and very touched by the light and all. And then somewhere I said that, you know, make the most of this life because this is all you have right now to live. And then we'll go back to the divine abode, never to come again. And there was this one lady who just said, my God, no, I want to come back again and again and again. And, you know, I have so many things I want to do. And I know I won't be able to do them in this life. And I want to, you know, travel. I want to. I want to have children and I want to travel and I want to, uh, you know, cook different foods, experience different cuisines and nations and and uh, so this life is too short and I want to just uh, gather the the experiences and share them with others and all. And she said, I want to be born again and again and again. And then I was a little taken aback because she didn't understand the concept of karmic uh, evolution and completion of your karma and uh, that once all the negative and the positive has been balanced out and all the recordings of your akashic records have been downloaded and live that you have freedom to to move away and sometimes people do have uh, you know the freedom to approach the divine and say that i'm willing to go down and be a healer and heal other uh, soul groups and bring them back to the divine abode and then some people say we just want to experience and enjoy and buy this lavish car this lavish home this lavish food this lavish music and i want to experience go to plays and and swim and dance in the forest and the rainforest and see uh, you know the migration in africa and you know they're just uh, living with the connecting to their senses and the experiences that the senses are giving them whether it's visual whether it's uh, you know their ears hearing and their nose smelling and their mouth tasting so they want to go to michelin star restaurants and experience this novelty of uh, taste and uh, food and nurturance and then there are others who just uh, want to give up all the material things and they want to become yogis and they want to go to the forest and meditate and and give uh, of themselves to the world unknown. And then there'll be others who want to, you know, preach and become motivational speakers and they want to uh, share their knowledge and motivate others to do things their way. And, you know, they're constantly telling everyone you're doing this wrong, 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 change, change, change. You have to do this different, different, different. But the reality is that everybody is doing what they're born to do and it's absolutely perfect to experience whatever you're experiencing. So it's, uh, you know, it's like uh, everybody has a different take. And I remember very soon after that, I went to uh, Bogota to uh, do a seminar. And uh, then there was this lovely healer there who said, uh, you know, folded their hands and said that, you know, I want to be liberated. Uh, from uh, this painful experience of this human life and I want to go to a place of deep love where I'm only love. And then I remember telling them that, okay, I'm going to give you the key to your heart. So every time you feel this sorrow, this pain, you just go in there open and uh, stay in the heart. And then, uh, you know, got to tune to the healing and then he's still in touch with me, staying in the heart and healing. And... Uh, it's lovely. He experiences life one day at a time. So finally, the life that you have is only in this moment till you're breathing and everything else is incidental. And all your memories, all your happiness, your, you know, when we, we are very happy in an event, we want to replicate that, but it's never the same. And when we have a sad experience, we think, and we bring that sadness into every experience, and we keep making everything more and more and more sad because finally it's about the law of attraction, which is uh, coming in and uh, playing a very important role. So whatever you're thinking, you're attracting that from the universe. Whatever you're, uh, you know, saying is attracting something. Whatever you're doing is attracting a consequence. Whatever you are wearing is attracting the vibration of a specific light frequency that's coming to you. So you have to be very, very aware and very vigilant of what you are doing. And I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm just saying that it's 
uh, collaborating with the other energies. And if you're feeling uncomfortable, then obviously you have to change the way you're thinking, the way you're seeing, the way you're smelling, the way you're tasting, and the way you're touching the truth of your life. And if you don't like it, you know, I always say that if you don't like where you are, look at all the things that you did in the past and know that they've, they've brought you to this point. And if you want to be somewhere else in a different experience, then you have to change what you're doing. So be very purposeful in understanding that there is a law of attraction and there's a law of abundance and there's a law of forgiveness. And all three of them are the pivotal points of the triangle. So the law of attraction is gathering some energy, the law of abundance is bringing some energy, and then the law of forgiveness is releasing some energy. So depending on, and right in the middle of these three sits the law of gratitude. So it's a very, so tell very us sweet. more about the law of gratitude, Ma, because I feel that a lot of us uh, think that in this life, uh, we always seem to think that we deserve more mm -hmm. or that we are more brilliant or that we're very intelligent and everyone else is dumb and doesn't know what's going on. Sometimes there is that vibration, uh, you know, when you're talking to people, when you're hearing your own voice, Self. maybe, of uh, self-evaluation. So how do we, what is the difference between having a reality check, um, mm. you know, being hard on oneself and then being overconfident? Yeah, I'm reminded of the story of a boatman who was, uh, you know, taking these uh, three beautiful people. One was a scientist, one was a geologist, and the other one was uh, also uh, a finance expert. And uh, he was taking them across the Hooghly, and then they were, uh, you know, telling him that these are the currents of the river and how he should use them to, uh, you know, uh, travel with his boat. And then the other one was saying, you know, the wind currents are coming like that and you should use those, uh, you know, to increase your miles. Uh, and, you know, you'll have to make less effort. And then the scientist was telling him, you know, the, I've studied so much about the sun and the light and how the winds move and this and that and how the currents of the river come. And so you should, you know, and then they kept telling him, oh, you wasted your life just riding this boat. You should do something more, something more. And then there was a storm. And then uh, he uh, said that, oh, you know, we'll, my boat's going to capsize because the storm is really bad. I hope you know how to swim. So they said they didn't know how to swim. So he said, what a waste of a life. So he swam to safety and they all perished in the waters of the Hooghly. So finally, it's about, uh, you know, we are always feeling... Uh, very critical about what we see in others and how we perceive others and how we uh, generate this conversation in our minds. And we are always evaluating that our life is superior. <coughs> and then uh, we uh, keep thinking that... Um, just a sip of water, please. Yes, no. Yes, sometimes we do think that our life is superior to others or that we deserve more than uh, what we are receiving and then that gratitude like because you said that we have to open that uh, space of gratitude so and what so these men were coming with them that we are already superior correct. we have everything more than you have you're like just a boatman in a small city of calcutta and you're mm -hmm. just uh, driving, you know, riding us through and taking us to the other side. Of and the we river. have such important work to work do. Work to do. And then there was a storm and then they all perished. And so he said, oh, what a waste of a lifetime with all this knowledge and all. So the point I'm trying to establish is that we have the knowledge. It's come with us, uh, you know, our mind, our intelligence, and of course, our ego self. We are bringing it back from that house of karma, from readings from the Akashic records and reading from the book of karma. And the angels of light have given us a great, uh, you know, clear picture of everything that we can experience in this life and uh, what all we can actualize and the law of abundance, the law of attraction, the law of forgiveness and the law of gratitude all collaborate to make us who we are and when we are young and if our parents, uh, you know, show us the generosity of respect for whatever we are attracting, whatever we brought into the family, 
then we grow into very strong individuals who are always grateful for whatever our parents are doing for us and we are willing to share that with others and sharing the most important sharing is that you don't you give up the act of judging and how do you give up the act of judging by actually flowing with forgiveness and not wanting to be right all the time that oh no i'm superior i know it better i know this is the absolute truth and you don't know anything so people do generate that consciousness and how to get shift yourself away from that consciousness is to understand that there is never anything right or wrong everything is just perfect in that moment and whatever the other person is saying is important for you to stay and listen and uh, you know uh, collaborate so when you bring judgment and when you bring uh, dissatisfaction and you bring uh, like an accusatory note into a conversation with someone which is coming from your false ego you're always creating a storm and in that storm nobody benefits you just like the storms that we had in delhi last yeah. week that there are like trees that are uprooted so we are uprooting the tree of the life and our own good fortune yeah, when we are the, bringing in these negative connotations into our expressions yeah i think the first tree is the tree of gratitude that gets uprooted mm-hmm. and then we uh, uproot the tree of abundance and then we uproot the tree of attraction and then you know that everything is that the universe is also not forgiving us the people are not forgiving us we are very very um taught about you know what will people say we live our lives many time about just resonating with what will people say how will they look at us how will they view us we are not looking at our real self and saying this is me and this is who i want to be and this is how i want to live my life and the whole world is telling you no 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 and then at the end of it they are very happy because you perished and uh, they've criticized you and they are get they don't understand that just on the next turn is they're going to perish as well so always show uh, you know a lot of uh, goodness because remember the law of attraction whatever people are coming into your life they are very important for you to fulfill your mission and they're bringing sounds and words and gifts as a great opportunities for you to convert those into uh, either lessons or e- opportunities to heal or to live well and enjoy and be part of you know uh, the nature that is surrounding you and i always tell little children to really appreciate you should go out in nature and you should play in the gardens uh, you know walk on the grass climb the trees and uh, be happy with the, not wanting the phone the tablet the game the internet and uh, you know always looking to to excite ourselves about things that are unreal you know i call it vicarious living that you're living a life that somebody else has already lived and documented you're not experiencing that first hand so you're always going to be dissatisfied always going to be angry always going to be fearful of that i'm missing out i'm not getting that experience i'm not getting that opportunity and you're looking at other people and maybe you know generating greed and jealousy and unworthiness but the reality is that you have everything within yourself and if you spend time with nature maybe read a book maybe talk to your loved ones spend time with them as a family uh, it's very interesting many times you know in the past when i've gone to a restaurant uh, for a meal i've looked around that there are families who have come and they are all sitting on the table and the food has been ordered and each one of them is uh, looking into their phone they're not even looking into the eyes of the loved ones though they have come out for dinner and they are wanting to spend family time together but they're still with their phone and as soon as the food will come they'll serve it in their plates and they not start eating and nurturing and sharing and caring and and being grateful for that food they're busy taking pictures that they want to put on i don't know where <laughs> they put them, on instagram and yes, on yeah. facebook and show people that we ate this we did this and this is 
you know, how healthy, this is my keto diet, this is my vegan diet, this is my whatever other diet that they're following. So it's very interesting to see that people have actually stopped collaborating with what is available. They're very collaborative in their mind with what people should see about them. And even if it's a pretense, they are okay with it. So they're really telling lies to themselves. So that is, uh, you know, the first step to forgive themselves because uh, they are not that what they're showing in the pictures, right? Yes. And they're always... Uh, it is a curated reality rather than us being experiential. experiential reality. And so that makes me really uh, <laughs> think. think that what is my behavior and what is everyone's behavior who's listening in, that how many times are we... Uh, so entrenched in trying to create a curated presentation or reality and how many times are we really genuinely living in that moment so could you give us some tips ma or some checks and balances for ourselves that when we are living our life and we do find ourselves straying into uh, these realms or roles of pretense not so much realms but roles of pretense how do we pull back and get back into the moment to celebrate this life that we have i think first and foremost when you wake up in the morning you should really look and think that if this is the last day that i'm going to be alive what are the things that i would like to do how would I like to bathe? How would I like to dress? What is my favorite clothes? What is, uh, you know, something that will give me comfort? What should I drink? What should I eat? Who should I call? Who should I spend time with? And, uh, you know, what should I really be saying to people? And how should I interact with them? What are the business decisions I should take? All the work decisions. Should I go to work? Should I go for exercise? You know, there, are, there is a difference between uh, intention and affirmation. The intention is what is very, very important. You know, there are lots of affirmations that we make in the new year that I'm going to do this. You know, setting goals. Isn't the affirmations about the new setting year? Setting goals, is yes. about setting goals. And then there is an intention that you have to replicate every day for that goal or that affirmation to come to uh, to become a reality. Yes. So uh, people get very confused with this intention and affirmation. So the intention, the affirmation could be that you want to lose 10 kilos at the end of the year. Yes. And the intention is that today you're going to eat healthy. It's not long term. Okay, so sometimes what we do is that we have the affirmation that we want to lose 10 kilos in the year, but our intention is to eat the pizza or the chana batura. And I'll do it just today and then And tomorrow. no, so we, we are not doing that intention of goodness yeah. that is collaborating with our affirmation. So then we feel very disappointed that our affirmations are not coming true. Yeah, so we have to judged. align our intention in the now, now with, with the, the affirmation larger affirmation or the wow. goal setting in the future to be able to live with gratitude. So, you know, when we eat healthy and our affirmation is going to be fulfilled, we see each day we are taking a step to walking towards that goal, that affirmation, then, uh, you know, we are very satisfied with that intention. And even if our intention fails today, we can still have the same intention or we can redesign it tomorrow. It could be somebody who says that, you know, I want to earn an X amount of money in the month and then just keeps thinking about, you know, I have to earn, I have to earn and never finds a job, never goes to work, never does business. How is that affirmation going to come true, right? So the intention is that you do whatever it is, you find your customers, you do the business, you look for a job. And if your uh, affirmation and your goal setting is complete and there is gratitude and there is forgiveness for all the things that you've done wrong in the past and now you're setting yourself forward so with the law of attraction and the law of abundance you will be able to generate a huge reservoir of great uh, you know uh, conversation with your destiny and you may get an offer of two three jobs and then you can choose or you get a business opportunity with someone holding your hand and saying uh, let's walk towards this I think that's a really eureka moment as well as a moment of great uh, joy to know that we can always 
realign ourselves in every moment with the intention that is then aligned with the affirmation which is then ultimately celebrating the life that we yeah. have because i had a gentleman who kept telling me you know i was at the beginning of the year i'm so busy auntie i really want to spend time i even want to visit you i want to spend time with my family my parents you know my extended family i want to do something good for them and then uh, you know he called me and said i haven't been able to come and it's uh, you know my intention is really to do so i told him one day i said if your intention is really to do why don't you start today so he said no but you know it's about uh, the future i want to do it in the future i said no there is no future it's only in the now that you have to do so he said what should i do i said do you have elderly uh, people living in your neighborhood he said yes so i said you start with them you you know go and visit them think that you're visiting me and go and be nice to them and uh, then when you do that that intention is fulfilled then the goal will also be fulfilled so he said okay and then he started and you know he's found the great uh, opportunities to help and to collaborate and to be happy with the people who are around him and he is able to communicate and uh, very soon he's coming to visit me also he yeah. set a date for next week wow and it's taken him so many years to say you know my goal is to do this my goal is to do this but the intention of action has to be in the now in the present moment for that goal to be fulfilled that's just you make it sound always so simple ma and i'm just always like in my head sort of going through the steps and trying to internalize it but you are so right that it is just in that moment that everything will just can be uh, triggered. triggered and can be transformed in a positive way so what was the first thing he did he forgave himself for not having done right yes and then he visited the the neighborhood aunt and uncle and they were so grateful that he came back with that blessing of gratitude and on the law of attraction he attracted uh, more um, complete intentions you know so if it was that he had to take his children to the park he wasn't saying oh today i'm very tired the maid will take them oh i'm very tired today you know i have a call i have this but then very soon he is now playing with his children and he's going down to the park with them and having a lot of fun and his children have fallen in love with that dad remember that all beings need that association that physical comfort that understanding that you know they are important in your life and uh, then the abundance just it's the rivers that just flow completely bringing everything abundantly into your life so i always tell people that stay focused on your intention and make that intention valid just for today and then you'll be able to complete and forgive yourself for not having completed all the intentions and uh, be grateful for all the ones that you did get done so it's somebody who, who could just say that i want to write a gratitude journal every day five things that i'm grateful for and uh, they'll come at tipping point you know the first 10 15 days you'll write the same things that you're grateful for your that you're alive that you've got food that you have nice clothes to wear and you know and then you'll notice that it'll become there'll be more gratitude for others doing things for you then after a few days of writing that it'll be you know i have people writing that how the universe is collaborating how the governments are making new decisions that are affecting their lives and they're grateful for those choices that people are making in the you know in the uh, ministries and, and with policies, policies and, with and structures and in, plans um, yeah amendments and uh, collaborative uh, interactions with uh, others that are impacting their life and uh, so everyone is uh, universally getting impacted with that law of abundance and i think that in our world there's a lot of opportunity for growth and uh, when we have gratefulness it will multiply huge amounts and we'll attract whatever we need the most in that moment 
So what if there is someone in the community, Ma, that is feeling that the same... So there could be some people who are feeling that the government and the policies are really beneficial to them. And then so there might be another group that might be feeling that the, pol the same policies or the same government isn't very good for them. So then how do, does that uh, balance out in the law of, um, you know, the divine healing light that you see? Like how, how do we recognize that where are we placed in history where we're being ungrateful versus where are we being placed in history where we must fight for our All rights. Right. Yeah, yes, you know, I'm going to give you this. Yesterday we had a seminar that was healing with the planets, right? Hmm. And then I shared a story which I can share here, which recently happened, that there's this gentleman who used to come to me and they have five brothers. And uh, they uh, were all uh, collaborating with the builder to build this beautiful five-storied home with many apartments in it. And uh, that they were all going to get their own floors and they were going to be independent and have ownership and not like a joint property. So they were all very excited. And there was this one gentleman, one brother out of the five who wanted the penthouse suite. And he kept telling me that I want that penthouse suite, I want that penthouse suite. And I really want it to be, uh, you know, uh, living in the top floor. And then he was uh, very disappointed. He, you know, called me one day and said that, uh, you know, my intention was to get that top floor. And I don't know what to do. It's, uh, you know, they're not giving it to me. My other brothers want it or not. So I said that whatever is your, uh, you know, justification, whatever it is, don't fight, uh, you know, just accept, be humble and remember that the divine wants you to have this floor. So he got the first floor in the house and he uh, was collaborating with his other brothers and finally settled in a little bit disappointed, maybe even a little bit ungrateful. But then just, uh, you know, last week he called me and he was so excited, so excited. So I said, what's this excitement about and you're sounding so happy so grateful and he said oh you know i'm over the moon i said what happened he said that my eldest brother who took the top floor is now uh, got a notice from the building authorities because the builder didn't take the you know final author authorization from the government to build that floor so my brother has now got a demolition order so I'm so glad that I don't uh, didn't take that flow and it didn't come to me and now I have. So I immediately told him that, you know, you need to support that brother. You need to find the builder. You need to find, uh, you know, whatever penalty has to be paid because that flow shouldn't be demolished, right? It's part of your uh, family heritage and togetherness. So he was a little taken back. He said, I should help that brother who didn't let me have the penthouse suite. So I said, yeah, because the penthouse suite has some karma with you. And it, mm. it didn't let you face this anguish, you know, of uh, demolition. So go and help him. So he's, he's promised that, you know, he will find out from the ministry and, and see what he can do. But for, you know, for a little while, there was that thrill and that gratitude, which was born out of, thank God it's happening to him and not happening to me. And that's also not a good energy. good energy. So you have to forgive yourself for thinking like that as well. And then you have to have the intention Gentle to go help. ahead and to help everyone. Everyone that you can. That you can. Yeah. And then you'll increase abundance in your own life and you will attract the right thing. And you live happily ever after. But remember that it's only for today. It's only for today. So Ma, we have a lot of love and gratitude coming in from Inder in Canada who says, thank you for this nice collaboration story. With your guidance always, things are manifesting and moving. Mm -hmm. And then we have Mr. Ash who is uh, joining us and says that it's only your divine glance that delivers us at all the gates of the absolute truth, dearest master. Our effort is a myth. And uh, so w with this aspect of the myth, and this word collaboration that I'm just seeing between like these two beautiful comments. comments. So the myth and the... Uh, so is collaboration a myth? No. No, it isn't. No, souls are always collaborating. 
and uh, the universe around us is collaborating and uh, remember that the trees are standing and the whole universe is collaborating to give them sufficient sunlight moonlight water air and uh, you know there are birds and monkeys that are living on those trees partaking of those fruits and flowers and seeds and uh, so are human beings you know so everybody is collaborating and the final collaboration comes from the father sky and mother earth because the trees wouldn't be able to produce their uh, beauty their magnanimity their association because the tree is not eating the fruit it's growing on it and growing it for other beings who are dependent on that nourishment and nurturance and whatever we are partaking of is a collaboration with that seed with that uh, you know a mango could have grown somewhere in africa and it could have traveled to india and then we could have partaken of it and then we would have been inspired to put the seed of that mango into our garden and it becomes a beautiful mango tree so the karma of that seed was to travel to india right and then yes. there were other facilitators who were collaborating to bring and then that seed had to become a brilliant tree and give fruit in india and but it's still called the african mango but it's growing in india absolutely so so that collaboration is, is very real yeah. and so uh, is the correct takeaway or one of the many takeaways that in our own environments our lives even with our own bodies pa- uh, places and people that we must look to collaborate yes and we absolutely. must look to be useful to others and to our environment absolutely. and to mother nature and to the planet yeah, earth ultimately in the same uh, seminar yesterday somebody was telling me that you know people in the office are not collaborating with each other and they're having disagreements and there's lots of uh, power play and she doesn't know why it suddenly happened and all i said was that the plants in her office are not uh, you know feeling happy and maybe all these people should water the plants and she immediately responded by saying yes the plants are looking very dry and wilting and i don't think we are watering them enough so it can be a simple thing because every living thing around you and even the non living thing is impacting your life is collaborating with you uh, you know the sheet that you're sleeping on at night on your bed the color it is that planet is generating that power to give you that energy so that you wake up very refreshed so they are also collaborating the clothes that you wear that sitting in your cupboard and the ones that you take out repeatedly and wear and the others who are sitting there and silently waiting for that lovely day when they're going to be coming out of that cupboard to uh, you know collaborate with your body to spread that energy of goodness and beauty and nurturance and love for the universe remember that you wear the clothes and others see and they appreciate and they love uh, you know what you're wearing and then that validates and then according to the law of attraction you attract that energy and it starts to create good abundance in your life and then that abundance you can share with them right there in that moment take it home share it with your family share it with your home and uh, share it by your thoughts with people who are not even in this world they may be needing some of that abundance from you so it's like a very wide network like a fish net which is anointed with many many gems and jewels and every one of us has our own fishing net and we are always fishing for a compliment we are fishing for an opportunity to convert our assets into you know paying assets we are fishing for a new relationship of love uh, maybe we are lonely so we are always fishing and this net that covers our aura and our world is uh, always getting entangled with other nets and depending on the collaborative effort of the net we get we catch the fish that we want very simply put <laughs> That's lovely, ma. Hmm. So we will um, come back for yeah. the second session for today's mm-hmm. Sunday Collective, uh, collaborating with our own lives uh, through some mantra and meditation led by ma. Yeah, and to create this law of attraction and abundance, I suggest that everybody go and get two things from the kitchen. Okay, so yeah. two things from the kitchen. 
Yeah. Okay, so do join us back in about two minutes. Okay. Welcome back, and we are live for the second session of today's Sunday Collective. Love you all. So as people are joining in, Ma, what is that um, one healing action that we can do for ourselves or maybe even for others when they are feeling a helpless sense of that this is the life that there is? The, the only thing that helps us connect to the law of abundance is by taking something from a kitchen and uh, putting it out for the birds or for the squirrel or, you know, it could be grains, it could be rice, it could be sugar for the ants or even a spoon of, uh, you know, atta, which is uh, flour. flour made from wheat or from rice or even basin, anything. Uh, that you say is leave out for other souls to partake of the feast and that will immediately bring the feasting uh, you know energies of attracting the right uh, you know energies for you to collaborate with and the other is of course watering the plant like I already said if you water a plant you're quenching the thirst of uh, of another soul and all the living beings that are living within that uh, body of earth and uh, the roots and nurturing that tree, that plant, that sapling, that creeper, that indoor plant, that bamboo, whatever it is that you have at home, uh, to nurture it and to collaborate with it and to give it uh, uh, in place of importance in your life. And of course, hugging people, saying nice things, writing love notes, making a call, sending them an email, a message of love and affection, not always criticizing you didn't do this in time, you didn't do this. And uh, so to be positive is very important. Not the COVID positive, but the other positive. Yes, so it can be very uh, nurturing. And the two things that they've got from the kitchen, they have to... Uh, Let's see what it is that they brought. Maybe somebody brought water and some uh, grains of sugar. Or somebody made a tea for themselves. Whatever it is, uh, partake of it would be a good start. And if you can't, then share it with others. So what if someone has brought like a utensil from their kitchen? Then fill it with water and water a plant. And what if it's like a ladle or a spatula? Then they should cook something, something with and it share, and share it with the share family. Share it with the family and, today. Yeah, and if they brought your paper, you know, paper towel from there, then use it mm. to clean some part of your house, like dust with it. And uh, if it's water, drink it. So if it's a food item that uh, so they everyone should. joining in now, uh, if you were there for the first session, Ma had instructed us to go to the kitchen and bring two things so if they are cooked things or if there's water then please partake of it and share it with others uh, if uh, it is like Mitali sharing she brought masoor dal and atta so you can uh, lightly boil the masoor dal and either eat it or you can uh, share it with the birds and the squirrels and put it in the atta and or put it in the atta and make, make a roti uh, make a dal ki roti and of course, if you've got utensils, like Sahiba Garg asks that the things we got from our kitchen, uh, do they matter? Yes, they all yes, matter. Uh, but uh, there is no, uh, speci uh, we're just dividing it into two types. One is food items and one are utensils. And I'm going to share that uh, Mitali bringing the atta, the sun's light, because uh, gehun, the wheat is always kanak kanak, which is gold. And uh, the masoor dal is uh, the orange, uh, you know, energy of uh, Mars and the sun. And so the sun in Mars is going to give a lot of physical strength, good health, and uh, is going to be uh, collaborating with them to restore and bring them to better health. If somebody's brought a utensil, it's always satin. And uh, if you put water in it and water a plant, that will become mercury. So whatever action you do it doesn't matter we are going to send healing that it's very appropriate for you and it will heal something for you because i'm sending out the healing as is divya uh, that whatever you collaborated with your kitchen remember bringing two things away from your kitchen means that you had to go in there to leave the energy that you had partaken of in the first session 
And what were they? They were the, you know, the energies of forgiveness and abundance and gratitude and attracting the goodness from there. So you, the kitchen is also attracting the goodness, is attracting the abundance, is attracting the gratitude. So you are going to be very grateful for, uh, you know, Mitali is going to be very grateful that her sun planet and her uh, Mars, Mars is healed and, and she's going to have better health. That's what she wants. So that's good indication. So, so good indication, good collaboration with yes. the kitchen. And then we have Marjorie who's gotten a chai rui boss tea and some pistachios. And Inder who's also got tea and an, a bottle of oil. So tea is very good for uh, nurturing your fears because it's brown in color and because it's hot and soothing. So it's going to, uh, you know, increase your ability to digest the abundance. And sometimes we don't encourage abundance to come in because our digestion abilities to live with that abundance are insufficient. So drinking tea is always to let go of the fear and to invite that goodness into our life. And pistachios is, of course, mercury and there's salt and they're, I'm presuming they're salt and they're green in color and they come with a very nice covering of like a bud and it open a little bit so you can get to the goodness of the highest intelligence. And salt is the flavor of uh, great love from the divine direct. Remember that all the oceans in the world are full of the salt. So that is uh, Mahalakshmiji's energies of opulence and abundance. And so that's what you're attracting, Marjorie. So go for it. And what did Inder brought some oil? Oil. So oil is also to facilitate because it's coming from uh, the seed of, uh, you know, whether it's sunflower oil or it's coconut oil. It's coming from the, the fruit of a tree. And uh, so you, it's a very, very auspicious and opulent energy to have to harness and remember that it's one of the most difficult uh, foods to digest in the physical body and uh, the liver and the gallbladder collaborate to give you the enzymes and the acids to break that fat down to digest it and to become food for the human body in a very subtle way and uh, so uh, yes uh, lots of uh, the liver is always generating love and association and collaboration so you'll flow with more love and more association and then we have charu who brought beet dalia and gur jaggery oh, so that she's also mars and sun sun so very nice, nice. so they should definitely cook it and eat, eat it, it and, and share and it. Of it and partake Make of a it. Gurki roti. wonderful and use the ghee and then you'll have the energy of opulence, opulence coming from Venus. And all the planets will collaborate to make you happy. This is so informative, Ma. Very grateful yeah. for taking the time and decoding our choices for us. And I think all of us are learning, learning. from each other. And of course, always you. And so yeah. then we have Neera Auntie who says that she brought sugar and rice. Yeah, so the rice is uh, the energy of the moon and sugar is the energy of the heart and uh, Venus. So the moon and Venus are collaborating to give her better business and more auspiciousness and bringing sweetness to her tongue. So she's going to be very forgiving and uh, she's going to have gratitude in her heart for all the attraction of new business and abundance of wealth. So continue. And then we have uh, Mamta, Mamta Dhingra, who says that she brought cherry and walnut. So walnuts are the brain and cherries are the root chakra. So your brain and your purpose of life are going to align. You're going to become more intelligent and do more healing. And then we have Preeti Arora who uh, brought green cardamom and sugar. The green cardamom is also the energies of the heart and mercury. And they have very interesting, they have black seeds inside when you break those they become white from inside. So the moon's light, the Saturn and Mercury all collaborating and with the sugar bringing sweetness into your life. So lots of hidden opportunities of business coming up. So and eat then, that elaichi and that sugar for sure. Oh, wonderful. And then we have Mr. Sanjay Devan who says that, ma'am, I've got jeera and salt and we also have Sahiba, Sahiba girl 
who also got salt and enos, the digestive salt. Oh, what was that doing in the kitchen? I don't know. Or maybe she's making dhokla, dhokla or something. Dhokla or something or idli, yeah. I'm not sure. So those are all uh, sugars, enos. There's so sugar jeera, and salt. salt and eno are all digestive. Oh, digestive, yeah. So is it the, the fire of digestion is being, being healed, healed and balanced and in their balance home? And there's no greed anymore and then they're going to have good health. Mmm. And then we have uh, <laughs> Adhishi Madhu, who says that uh, she brought a bowl of rice and some cloves. Oh, so then definitely the cloves are indicating that you need some protection from the evil eye. And rice is that there's lots and lots of abundance. So you can either tip that bowl of rice back because this is healed rice and then use it for your family. Or you can take this bowl of rice and cook it over time and eat and partake of the energies. And the cloves you should keep. So, of course, if, I, if someone's brought in a bowl of sugar, they can't or eat it all. Of, today. All of it, just partake a little bit of it. A little pinch of it. A pinch of it. Okay? Put the rest of it back, back in, the, in box. the kitchen, in the box. And then we have Dr. Mona Bhatia who says that she got anjeer and water. So, fig. Oh, fig. Fig are purple fig and, and green, and they have lots and lots and lots and millions of seeds. So, it's a very, very nectarian food coming direct from the gods mm -hmm. and so that is bringing harnessing some love and compassion and new understanding and what is the nectarian abundance that's coming from the universe of love mm -hmm. and light and so to drink it and eat the anjeer it will be nice share it with your husband and then we have ingita who says that she got rice and jaggery powder oh so that's good moon and mars which is restoring great health Mm -hmm. and combating all disease so good mm. they'll all get something that is most important for them in this yes. moment in time so i think now all the combinations are permutation combinations of whatever ma has already. described so we've got mr mithli Mi miss mithlish saxena uh, who is uh, got sugar and salt and then there's manju gupta who's got five cloves and one green elaichi and yes, so uh, all of it ma has already Describes yeah, are an indication that you have some evil eyes, so you should put them in a little packet and keep them in your bedside drawer or in your bag for protection, protection. and good luck. And then we have Denzel. Hello, Denzel, who Hello. says it's uh, interesting to see how everything we do is connected in so many ways. Yeah. So many times we really don't think. Thank you, Renuji and Vivya. We love you, Denzel. Love you, Denzel. That's a good thing. Everything that you do is creating a resonance from the external universe and nothing is by choice or chance. Everything is by design mm. and we're doing it to collaborate and to increase the abundance and the attraction of good fortune into our lives. And then we have uh, uh, two very unusual food items. Uh, so there's Preeti Mohan who has brought potato and bhutta, as in a corn on the cob. Corn on the cob is this lovely thing with the green uh, covering, the heart, and it's twinkling mm. with the Jupiter's light. So it's mm. a very, very good indicator that she's using her intelligence to further her spiritual adventures. And potato is Rahu, so she is uh, getting rid of all the obstacles. So cook them and eat them over time. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And then we have uh, Aruna, Aruna Dayal, who picked up honey and salt and she could not leave behind water. So she got Brought water, honey things. and salt. <laughs> so good. Salt is about cleansing, purification and abundance coming from the goddess Lakshmi herself. And mm. honey is food of the gods. So they're blessing you and drink the water. And then we have Anita, as in Anahita, who also says that she brought honey and a porcelain bowl. And then we have Simran, Simran Sani, who brought a plate and a spoon. So it's nice that there, there are a few people who brought utensils. Yeah. Um, so yes, so like Ma said, that you can either uh, fill up that today. porcelain bowl with water and then, uh, you Put know. some honey in it and drink it. Drink it, or you can offer it, uh, you know, to, to the plant. a plant. And uh, plates and spoons, like Ma said, is all uh, the Saturn energy. So even if it's a porcelain bowl, Ma, it's Saturn. Yeah, Saturn. And so that's just that it's balancing vessel, vessel. vessel. So it's balancing the Saturn energies. And, no, and also indicating that you have insufficiency of abundance. 
so you must fill that plate and eat with that spoon from that plate something mm-hmm. so that you can invite the abundance into your life mm-hmm. so you're feeling some absence of uh, nurturance mm-hmm. so i'm going to send you all lots of healing especially mm-hmm. to simran and anahita Wonderful. And to everybody else who got who's vessels. Brought, mm, vessels. And then there might be some people, I think Neha has sent a few messages uh, where she, I think maybe has brought uh, rice. Uh, Neha, just correct me if I'm wrong. And she doesn't want to eat the rice. So she can just so she boil can it and it leave it, it for the birds. Okay. Yeah. That's beautiful. And, or she can tip it back as uh, Mahaprasad into the box mm. and then over time whenever she feels like eating mm. it, mm. she can use that abundant rice very nice and then we have ambika who says good morning ma'am and divya didi uh, i picked a bale fruit and garlic the bale fruit is uh, you know green on the outside and orange on the inside so it's healing the energies of mars and your intuitive mercury which is bringing more intelligence and garlic is for heightened passion so you have to understand that you have to be more passionate about how you use your purpose or creative energies of the hara to bring fruition to what you want to actualize remember the intention and the affirmation need to co-join for you to be successful wow and then we have nanki who's uh, singing got, away singing away and has got methi seeds she's written oh, nice. metro but i'm Mitras. presuming that's metra is methi yeah. only methi seeds fenugreek seeds and cinnamon Oh, wow, that's uh, Rahu and Jupiter. So Rahu and Jupiter are very close together and they're separating. So that means that all the obstacles are going away. And you're going to be blessed by your guru to become more and more popular, more and more famous and sing beautifully. Wonderful. And there's a little bit of bitterness in the methi seeds. So in this evolution, there may be some bitterness, but you can send the healing and sing with sweetness to get rid of that bitterness. I love that. So is this something that we can just do intuitively once a week, go into our kitchen and just pick up two things? Then now they'll think what is it, what you know. I'm just I was just using it as an experiment to see what is the law of attraction and what is the abundance that you're bringing. All the people who brought the rice, remember rice when it's cooked grows at least three to four times its volume. So that's why it's always, and it's the direct energy of Lakshmi Ji, and that's why it's always used in all the Vedic pujas, and it's an indicator of uh, good grain that uh, not nurtures and nourishes all our body, ex- especially our third eye chakras. So it's always bringing a lot of good fortune to our intelligence. And it needs lots of water to grow, right? Yes. So that water element is seventy uh, percent of our body's, uh, you know, element is water. So that gets automatically healed. Beautiful. That's so a very nice food to pick. So then spontaneously. We have, yes. We have Nanki who says, "I love you both. Thank you." Parbeen says, "Wow, you are magical." <laughs> Sahiba says, we all are sure we will sail through with your blessings. Gratitude. Yes, yes, of course. Fully protected, healed. And all those who got the clothes, don't panic and say, oh, you know, everybody has somebody or the other who's not wishing them well. So five cloves or seven cloves in a little white tissue wrap and put tucked somewhere in your bag or in your bedside drawer is always great protection from Wonderful. the four corners of the world. Amazing. So Katrina joins in from the Philippines and says, Renuji, thank Love you. Love you. Very nice. So that's been very exciting. Should so I take should one be. more combination? There's Rita yeah. Arora who shared. Yeah. She says that, Ma, I got ketchup and hibiscus leaves. Oh, wow. Hibiscus leaves from the kitchen? Were you making tea with them? I presume what so. What is a hibiscus plant doing in the kitchen? The flowers, yes. Maybe she has dried them. hibiscus flowers and she's thinking that's leaves maybe. Okay, nice. So yeah. that's an offering. The green is, the green or the red of the flower, whatever it is, is a great combination of the heart and the root chakra. And uh, she brought... Uh, ketchup. Ketchup. 
and that's indicating all the flavors the 108 flavors of your spinal chakras resting in the root so now it's time to get active Rita and bring you restore yourself to full fitness and all the aches and pains in your back will disappear and all the blocks that you think oh I can't do this I can't do that I I must not do this get rid of all those and of course eat that ketchup a little bit <laughs> maybe one lick little lick and then you'll be done for the day nurtured wow. and nourished and use those leaves for making a tea or something to seep them in water and drink it it'll be healthy and then invite. we have Parshruti yes. who says that I didn't uh, physically bring anything master but in my mind I think I would have brought vegetable oil in a steel plate so that's Saturn and Jupiter so heal them by going and eating something in that in particular that plate, plate that, that you would have in your mind, yeah. and use the oil to either put Fry some, some oil in your yeah or put some oil in your hair or maybe massage your lovely skin and make it more healthy amazing yeah i love should it. we do a little meditation now before we yes ma so before thank you all for joining in and much much gratitude to you ma as always and so we'll be ending today's sunday collective with a joyful short uh, meditation, meditation and connection to the celebration of this one life that we have yeah. in all its glory yeah. so ma so let's begin let's begin so whether you are seated or lying down i invite you to close your eyes of course those of you who are listening in while walking or doing another activity or maybe some of you find yourselves in a car or in a park you can just listen to my and my voice and just connect with some joy and lots of gratitude in your heart and we'll begin with chanting home five times starting now the sound the vibrations and see yourself in a golden pyramid seated in the point of the triangle or the pyramid at the top of your head with a beautiful cascading golden light is bringing in the light of the divine direct from the source see it as a goldenish white light that's pouring down coming from the zones of the law of attraction and flowing deep into your heart excavating all the debris all the anguish the pain the hurt that you have stored there over lifetimes and this cave of your heart becoming very opulently effulgent with this gold white light and the seed of gratitude bursting forth and becoming a little creeper of devotional actualization from the law of attraction and see this creeper beginning to grow from your heart 
moving to the hollow of your neck. Take two fingers of your right hand, the index finger and the middle finger. Place them in the hollow of your neck so that the creeper can go past this fifth dimension, making its way. You can press a little bit if you feel that there's some obstacle in the creeper moving upwards towards your third eye chakra and the purple zone of light and then growing further up from your crown. Gently take the two fingers of your hand, touch them on your forehead and then the top of your head in caressing your back head, your back neck Gently bring your hands back to rest in your lap, knowing that you have opened the pathways of this light coming and the creeper of gratitude growing into this law of attraction so that you always attract gratefulness from the world that you live in. Take your awareness to your navel center and see good fortune beginning to vibrate as concentric circles of golden light and they're moving away from your navel becoming bigger and bigger as they move away covering your shoulders and your spine and then gently covering your root chakra with your crown chakra and the circles just expanding further and further away so that you are in movement your energies in movement, inviting abundance from the right side of the pyramid into that point where your hip is joining your right thigh, your right hip joining your right thigh and the abundance energies gently finding their way into the root, into the Kundalini Chakra, into your Hara Chakra and nurturing, invigorating and you see this energy as a pale lime green energy of abundance moving through your body like electric currents joining the navel, the heart, the throat, the third eye, the crown with the hara, the kundalini and the root. And now focus on your left hip and your left thigh where your intentions and affirmations are coming together and affirm in this moment, I am connected to the supreme source of the light. I accept, I accept, I accept. And see a flood of pale lilac energies flooding, joining with the pale green energies. And see from the center of your navel, like a sun rising with the pale green and the purple rays of light flooding where your willpower and your balance from your lack energies of your ankles bursting forth to create the new you. The you that is effulgent is in contact with goodness, with gratitude, with abundance. And now know that from your eyes and ears Brilliant rays of purple light are flowing out and they are activating your ability to forgive. All that you hear and all that you see is being forgiven automatically in this moment. Spread your arms wide into the sky, into the earth, gently like flapping wings of a bird flying. Just keep going up and down, knowing that you're excavating all pain, all anguish, all hurt, all remorse, all regret, and forgiveness is being activated.
from the seed of the creeper of gratitude and see rays of the purple and lime green becoming a little darker in activating your heart chakra and your third eye chakra to always be in sync with compassion and gratefulness so that you can live your life gently embrace yourself in a wide hug resting your hands on your shoulders sliding them down your upper arms your elbows your forearms your wrists and your fingers gently caress these loving hands and see golden rays of light coming out of your fingertips and affirm i am healed i am healed i am healed i am healed you can open your eyes knowing that something has been activated your intention to live well has manifested in all your affirmations coming true love you all sending you big hugs and lots of healing stay well see you next sunday bye bye